Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. I'm in On One Photo Raw 2020 in this video, and I've got a little sunset shot that I took here in Austin a number of years ago, and I just kind of wanted to experiment with that and play around and see what I could come up with uh, with really just a few filter move, uh, slider movements and a few filters. I was able to make quite an impact on the photo, so let me show you the shot. Here it is, and with just a little bit of work, I turned it into that, which was a bit more vibrant, a bit more reminiscent of uh, what I remember. I wanted to work on the colors. I wanted to work on uh, amplifying the details in some areas and reducing them in others. And uh, let me show you how I did it. Okay, so here's the base image, and I started on the Develop tab in the Tone and Color uh, slider section. And that got me to that, which honestly is a massive improvement. And that's one of the things I like about um, editing and sort of taking my time, and that is you can make a big impact on a photo with just a few minor adjustments. So um, sometimes I get in a hurry and I'm like, oh, I'm going to throw color at it. I got this filter and all that. And I sort of have to tell myself, I'm like, calm down, Jim. It's cool. Um, you know, not a race, that sort of thing. And I'm able to get a, a, a nice edit with just a few basic things, including just this tone and color section. So here I, I went in, added a little contrast, took down the highlights, and then, uh, you know, slight bump here in temperature and tint, saturation and vibrance, and it really goes a long way. So one more time, there's before and the after. I've got, uh, you know, a little bit better contrast, a little bit better control of the light, and a little bit more impact on the color. Um, I don't think there was anything done in details um, and, you know, transform, that sort of thing. So from, uh, from here, I was like, you know, I like it. Um, I definitely think it's an improvement. And all I want to do is go fix a few things. So that's when I jumped over to the Effects tab. So let me scroll down. I started with my favorite, which is Dynamic Contrast, which honestly, um, I, I think it does such a great job with photos that... Like it's worth just just you know buying the software just for that filter. Um, I, I mean, I really like it a whole lot. Um, usually, it defaults to like 15 and 20 on medium and large. I move those around a little bit, got a little bit more impact. So there's the before and the after. Especially if you look here in the trees and stuff, this middle section is really starting to get crisper and uh, pop quite a bit, which is um, I think nice. Um, so that was that. Um, and the next thing was really just playing with color. So I used the uh, the new color balance filter, which I love. Uh, I'm a big color guy at heart, so having this filter in uh, the 2020 version is great. I clicked on highlights, and I just chose a hue. I actually left it at zero. You can slide it to pick the hue that you want, and then you slide it to pick the saturation level, which is the amount, right? So I picked 18. You know, you can go a lot further and get really crazy pink. I didn't want to do that, so uh, let me get back to about 18. And there we go, that's 17, one more, 18, there we go. Um, and you can also increase the luminance of it if you want, right? So you can say that or that. Um, I just left it at zero. I felt like the, the brightness or luminance value of that color was fine. And that's part of the great thing about color balance. It really does give you a lot of control over, um, you know, individual, um, uh, you know, the, the colors that you pick, right? Highlights, midtones, and shadows. So. I didn't do anything in midtones or shadows for me. It was really about the color of the sunset light, which is primarily the sky, and of course, that which is reflected in the lake. So one more time, there's the before and the after. So I'm liking that, um, but it wasn't really done. So next I got color enhancer. Let me just turn that on and kind of see what I did. And that gave it a, a nice little kick as well. Here I took the temperature left a little bit, increased the tint, and then saturation of vibrance again. Really very simple things. And I didn't even get into color range or any of that kind of stuff, but I felt like it gave me a nice little bump in color. There's the before, and that was with color balance, plus of course what I've done on the develop tab in the tone and color section. And then after, a little bit richer sunset, which I liked. Um, and then it was really just, uh, the last step was dynamic contrast one more time, but this time I chose to go left with the uh, dynamic contrast and then mask it in. So what it does is when you drag it to the right, as you saw in the first use of this filter, it really amplified the details in that middle section, that landmass, that golf course over there. Uh, but this time I wanted to drag it to the left in small, medium, and large, and that really softened up the details. So let me show you the before. Uh, and if you look just at the lake, that's the only place I applied it. And after, I've got softer details there. Now, I just wanted to soften it a little bit because I don't want to overdo it and make it look like a long exposure because I have a boat and the boat is clear. Uh, the boat is in focus. So if you over soften the water, but then you have a sharp boat, 
It's like, how did you get a long exposure, Jim, but the boat's not blurred? Um, I just wanted to soften it a little bit. And that's that's really just personal preference. There's the before one more time. Oh, no, that didn't. There's the before one more time. It's got a little bit of that ripply effect, and I'm, I'm not a super big fan of that. Also, some of that was amplified in my first use of the filter because I did that one globally. I didn't go into any masking tools there. So when I came back here with dynamic contrast to soften the water, I wanted to just mask it in to uh, slightly to, uh, to compensate for what I uh, kind of did the first time around. So, um, you know, let me turn that on again. There it is. And to mask, you know, you just click on the masking window. And then I just went into the brush and I chose to paint in and I just painted into the water. And if you view the mask, you can see I did go basically around the boat and the boat's wake because I didn't want to mess that up. So I wanted to leave the boat and the wake of the boat uh, sharp. And um, I think it makes sense for the photo. So one more time, here's the water before and the water after. And that was really it. I mean, simple stuff, a few filter sliders, um, on, or I should say a few sliders on tone and color on the develop tab and then over here in effects just a couple of filters of uh, four one of them used twice both positive and negative was able to uh, quickly go from you know a, a sunset photo and I like the scene but I think it was kind of lacking some some punch to the final photo which I think is much more reminiscent of how I remember it a bit more sunsetty a uh, nice color nice detail on the landmass and um, a little bit smoother water and again that's personal preference I just don't like um, you know, rough water that much. Um, you know, another thing I could do is go over here and get the uh, the retouch and maybe take that thing out of the water. I'll probably do that, but it's very simple and straightforward in how you do that in on one. And that was really it, just a quick workflow video in on one. I'm having fun, continue to experiment, and I'll be back with more videos about this great product. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. If you have any questions, hit me up down below. You can check out on one at the link down below as well. And thanks for watching, my friends. I'll see you real soon. Have a great day. Take care and adios.